When I started this task, I didn't know how to, uh, what to write about. I had written about my father's accomplishments, having been raised in an abysmally poor family, going to Harvard on a full scholarship, and retired from Warner Brothers as the VP of Foreign Operations. I didn't know how to begin. And then, as I started looking at the history of PG&E, it seemed appropriate. Approximately 1,500 wildfires every year. Hinkley, 1952 to 1966, contaminated water tables, yet failed to disclose that for uh, 21 years. The Toronto Fire, 94, Sierra Wildfire, substation fire in San Francisco, Pandola Fire, a San Francisco fire substation, um, the Sims Fire, the Fred's Fire, an explosion and electrical fire in San Francisco, Rancho Cordova explosions in 2008, PG&E had installed the wrong pipe in 2006, a San Francisco electrical fire and explosion in 2009 due to a faulty power line from the 1920s. That's four in San Francisco. I have, don't know what PG&E has against it, uh, that county. San Bruno pipeline, Carmel gas explosion, Butte fire, Ghost fire, 17 wine country fires, Redwood fire, Sulphur fire, Cherokee fire, 37 fire, Blue fire, Pocket fire, Atlas fire, Norbaum fire, Adobe fire, Patrick fire, Pythian fire, Nuns fire, Cascade fire, and then the 2018 campfire. What I would say, if I were directing this to uh, PG&E, as I would tell them, they murdered 85 people, 84 in the fire, and one who committed suicide rather than be burned to death, and at least three elderly citizens who died a few days later because of the stress of being left homeless and penniless. I would tell PG&E, these were not manslaughter cases that you were charged, because you had the capacity to know that what you were doing would kill people. With over 1,500 annual wildfires and the specific disasters I listed, you knew that what you were doing was wrong. And rather than reduce your bonuses, you allowed your failed equipment and your improper inspections to kill people. And that is homicide with malice aforethought, and that is murder. I would go on to tell PG&E, you murdered my dad. And I don't know how he died. I'll never know whether it was asphyxi asphyxiation as the fire sucked the oxygen out of his house, smoke inhalation, or a heart attack from burning to death. I would tell PG&E tonight, PG&E's upper management, tonight you should think about how much it would hurt to hold a lighter flame under your forearm. And now imagine this all over your body, in your eyes, mouth, nose, ears, and lungs as you inhale smoke up to 2,000 degrees. You thrash around blindly. Your clothes are, have been burned into your melted skin. And you can, if you can hear anything, it is only the sound of the fire. In my father's case, he might have heard his dog whimpering and howling. And you did that to 85 people. I would go on to tell PG&E, and what's even more galling is that you will retain your bonuses. And through my PG&E bills, I will be paying your bonuses, your fines, your shareholders' dividends, and your settlements. Unfortunately, what, what follows um, probably isn't appropriate to say in court. Um, I could go on and talk about your corruption. Uh, we learned that you uh, spent $79 million lobbying and evading taxes from 2008 to 2010, and despite a $4.8 billion profit and increasing executive pay by 94% in 2010, you paid no taxes but got a $1 billion tax rebate. 2014, California government investigation revealed that some of your top executives had regular communications with the California Public Utilities Commission for years. You'd allegedly been judge shopping during this time. You were charged with 12 criminal felony counts alleging violations on the Natural Gas Pipeline Safety Act. An investigation in 2018 showed that PG&E violated state laws, endangered its own employees, and endangered California re re residents through illicit practices every year between 2012 and 2016. 
After the San Bruno pipeline explosion, PG&E was sentenced to five years probation, $3 million in fines and community service, and also fined $1.6 billion by the CPUC. Victims' uh, settlements were $565 million. In a separate case, PG&E falsified gas pipeline records from 2012 to 2017. PG&E failed to implement legally mandated safety procedures. And the CPUC in 2018 reported that between 2012 and 2017, PG&E failed to locate and map, mark gas pipelines in a timely manner because of shortage of staff and management listed tens of thousands of late tickets as completed on time. So I would say to PG&E, so not only are you mass murderers, you're also thieves, liars, and forgers. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ben Stark.